Good morning, afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Uh, the day has come, ladies and gentlemen. It is officially the first time I'm going to show an Armstrong Powerhouse model on my channel. I tried to do this back in April, but unfortunately, again, I lost those videos, and I the scenarios, as you can see, are longer scenarios. I just didn't have a chance to come back to them. Plus, I fell behind for a little bit, so I had to rush to catch some stuff up and didn't have uh, the inclination to try and come back to these sooner because I, other things came out that I had to concentrate on as... Uh, projects and then other things came of interest and now I'm finally getting back and getting these done so we can get, start getting the Armstrong Powerhouse trains on there. The 170, the 158, 159 will all come in time. The 150 is installed, the 156 is installed, uh, the 321, the 142, a lot of these trains are installed. I am going to start getting around to them. I just want to show off the uh, Steam model first, the one available on Steam in each case for each of the trains if possible. That means I'm going to have to go back to the 156 on East Coast Mainline at some point. We are going to look at the 66 on East Coast Mainline as well. Uh, I've been keeping a little mum on this, but I actually want to do the 37 on East Coast Mainline as well, because there are some 37 scenarios I can stick that into. So I want to uh, try and do that as well. So there are a lot of uh, ways I'm going to be able to get some of these trains in here for trains I've already driven. And I am going to work my way into doing that. But I also have to keep in mind I'm trying to go to America and uh, Germany and other places once in a while as well. Canada for the couple routes that are in there as well. So um, I am going to be trying to still branch around the country to try to show a variety of things here. But for right now, I am working towards those Armstrong Powerhouse models. I might move to America very soon after the next, uh, after this video or after the next train I decide to look at. I'm going to do a lot more UK trains coming up here. But I also have a couple route ideas in mind as well. I still want to do South London Network because that will lead to another uh, train, the 465 or 456 or something like that comes with that. Uh, and I also know the Faversham route, the old one from 2014. Uh, with sheerness that also provides the 466 which there's also an armstrong powerhouse model of that so i am looking at some route ideas that will get me into those other models as well and those are kind of the routes i want to focus on with the exception of maybe a couple other routes that will lead me into some workshop routes or things on uk train sim that kind of read off of it in some cases so i have a lot of uh projects in mind i kind of need to get a trello board or something set up to uh put all the things I have that I want to do and then figure out what order I'm going to do them. And I really need to get something like that set up for this uh, channel so that I can then tell you what my upcoming plans are too, because I'm kind of still winging it right now, even after about 21 routes and uh, about just as many additional trains. So uh, we are working our way slowly through everything I have here. I have way too much to show you here and we're working our way through it, but we are going to get to those Armstrong Powerhouse models starting today. Uh, intermodal run around career mode, you are running an intermodal freight service from Grangemouth to Edinburgh. This involves running your Class 66 around the eight FEA wagons at Grangemouth and Larbor. We're doing two runarounds, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there might be some skippage in this, so I'll let you know as we get going. Anyway, there's also another note about this scenario that I'm going to need to explain to you when we get into the scenario. So I'll save that for when we get in there. Let's get started. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Armstrong Powerhouse Freightliner Class 66, uh, engine number 66614, the one being used for the scenario. That has not changed. It's the same train information in this scenario as anywhere else. So let's go ahead and take a look at the train before we get started. So let's take a look around at what's different about this version of the Class 66. I'm only going to show you what's different. All the controls and everything you see up here, they're exactly the same. Uh, you can now, I actually, you can't turn on the instrument lights. The instrument lights, uh, don't exist on this train so you just have to know what you're doing here so we're just going to ignore that uh, the other buttons are here the passenger goods timings are still here that's not different the on off function is still here for the uh, parking brake now it's on and it shows you I think when it's off yeah it shows you when it's off so if, if it's on it doesn't show you on if it's off it shows you it's off so the parking brake is off right now I'm gonna go ahead and apply it because why not so um, that means that I can't really apply a throttle and that's probably ideal right now. So keep your feet off, it's the same. The other buttons over here, the engine start, engine stop are still there. That's all the same. So nothing different there, but you're gonna notice the reverser is not in. If I bring up the HUD for just a moment, you're gonna see that I can't move the reverser up and down. It goes to 1%, minus 1%, and it kind of sticks there. The reason for that is because you actually have to use Shift W, or you can just tap, or you can just go on the reverser and tap on it. I think that's an option as well. Actually, here, here's the reversal slot down here. My hand is over the reversal slot. You can just tap that. But again, the keyboard shortcut is to hit Shift W. So I'm gonna hit Shift W right now. You can hear that the AWS buzzer is working 
on this uh, model of the train. I don't know why it was not working on my other class 66, but it's working here. You can also notice there's a bit of a delay in pushing it as well, which is really nice. So then you can move the reverser up and down like normal and that's perfectly fine. So let's hide the HUD again. Obviously the throttle and all that is exactly the same, nothing unusual there. Uh, there's actually the uh, radio. I don't think this radio is functional. Later trains in the series, in the Armstrong Powerhouse series, do have the NRN radio, but this is not one of them. Now, one more feature that I want to point out very quickly that is imperative for your scenario is the clag factor. Shift C and Control C, uh, I believe, are the ways that you would uh, change the clag factor. So Shift C right now will increase my clag factor to 9. Control C will lower my clag factor to eight. That means I started with a clag factor of eight. When the scenario loads, you actually see a whole bunch of pop-up bubbles showing you what your clag factor has been randomly assigned to. So you can actually pay attention and see what your clag factor is at the start of the scenario if you uh, take a moment to look at those little bubbles that show up on the right side. They will tell you what your clag factor is at the start of the scenario. Uh, AWS can be turned on and off using Control A. So AWS is now isolated. And now it is operating. So uh, those are the uh, two possible setups for that. Uh, the dead man's pedal actually works on the uh, train. So you can press and depress. I don't know if you can hear your little click when you push E. It's just the E button. So if something goes wrong while you're driving the train, you suddenly can't apply power. You might have hit E instead of W by accident or something like that. So uh, check that. Uh, where is the dead man's pedal, by the way? Let's take a quick look around here. So down here at the bottom of the train, that's the dead man's pedal. This is related to the driver vigilance device. So I guess you actually have to press the E button to respond to the driver vigilance device. That might be what it is. Something along those lines. So I'm not sure what the um, whole idea is, but if you, um, but you have to hit that once in a while. You may have to hit that once in a while with the driver vigilance device, which can also be turned on and off. Control D will operate that. And then Control E, or Control D again, isolates it. So those are some of the options. I'm gonna to get to the computer above the head, above our head in just a second. As well, take another look at the side of the train here, because you know, at least you're looking at something. Now there's a train going by. I think can't hear it right now. I can, I can hear, it, but I can't see. Oh, there it is over there. We're gonna see him while the scenario is uh, actually in play. So we'll see that train later. Uh, so moving along, uh, H will turn on the control. H actually turns on the hazard lights. So look, let's look at the train outside for this one. Hello. So control H turns on your hazards, and they just keep blinking. They're just gonna keep blinking like that. So if you have a problem with your train, which shouldn't happen in Train Simulator, but if you do, you can actually um, have your hazards turn on. I think there's an indicator in the cab that your hazards are going as well, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere on the headlight. There they are, on the headlight panel, you can see the hazards are blinking up there as well. So we'll turn those off now. Moving on to the next uh, unique little feature, the reverse sir hand we already showed you. Tail lights can be turned on or off just by pushing K. So they're now on. And they're now off. And um, shift gunpad enter does something with visual aids. I think it's for when you're outside the cab, it will turn on visual aids um, for things like when your AWS is on. Actually, that's not what I want to do. That's the wrong button. Try that again. <laughs> I just, uh, I did what I didn't want to do yet. Uh, but in any case, um, oh, shift gunpad enter. So there, visual aids are now disabled and now they're enabled and so on and so forth. You might have noticed in the top upper left screen when I hit control enter, uh, all of a sudden my um, computer started changing up here. So let's see if we can turn this off for a second because I didn't actually want to do that yet. Is there an off option? Okay, it doesn't say there's an off option, but if I, um, I'm just gonna show you very quickly how this works. You can actually uh, go back and I'm gonna try to go back if I can right now. Uh, can I go back? Back please. Uh, control and unpad one. Okay, so now it's off. This is the starting screen for the, uh, starting setup for the screen here. So if you hit control one on the numpad, sorry, it's not control one, uh, what turns it on? I think just enter turns it on. Yeah, so enter turns it on. So now you have a whole bunch of menus here. You can use the uh, control key with the two, four, six, and eight buttons to move around and just poke around at whatever you want to look at here. And you can actually go into the different options here. So data meters, for example, you, and again, it's control enter. If you just hit numpad enter by itself, it will do nothing. But if you hit uh, control enter, it will then select it. Program meter does nothing. Creep control does nothing. Cooling system actually gets you into information about the cooling system. You can look at that while the train's running if you want. I'm gonna exit. Uh, we're gonna move to starting system, which does nothing. Digital IO does nothing. Power data, it does, shows you that. So power data works. Um, multiplayer, I don't, or not multiplexer, sorry. 
M M deck data. So none of that works except for those two that I showed you. I think you can go to the next page by hitting ah control up. Oh, page up, control page up. There we go. That gets you the next screen. Engine monitor doesn't work. EMD test doesn't work. So we're going to ignore that and get out of that menu. Let's go to self tests. That does nothing. Unit information. This actually takes the date of the scenario into account. So it looks like this scenario takes place on May 16th of 2021. Note that it is showing the date as year, day, month in the UK format. And the time is basically copied from the uh, HUD which it seems to be going a little quickly in some cases, but uh, it is going. I'm getting a really fast FPS here for, the, for some reason, because the time's going really fast. I don't understand why, but I'm getting a really good FPS. And I'll change once I, get, once I start driving. Over to traction cutout, doesn't do anything. Maintenance, well, you do get a fuel system check, engine pre-lube and air brakes up. None of those function. You can just go in and take a look. Fault, archi fault archive, sorry. Running totals, it shows the running totals on the display. Lifetime totals, you can go all the way into there and get information on how long the train's been running. This is based on, uh, in this in the case of this model, since September of 2020, or 2000, I think that is, 2000, September of 2000. So uh, it's since that date, it's been on for 68,444 hours. It's been running for 821,323 miles. These are estimated. They're not going to be anywhere near accurate. There's no way to know they're, they're accurate. Uh, and it's not assumed they're going to be accurate. Lifetime governor data does not work. Lifetime thrall data does not work. Monthly mileage does not work. Forget all that. Transfer data to port does not work. That does not work. And is there any other? Nope, there's no other data here. So yeah, that's basically everything on this computer. And then shift one turns it off. And that's that. So now that we finished taking a look at uh, the computer and how we can goof around with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started on the scenario itself, shall we? Before we get started, I need to let you know that I'm not going to be playing the original version of the scenario. I'm going to be playing a copy of the scenario. And the reason for this is because the timings, as you can imagine on older scenarios in general, are pretty much impossible. And uh, therefore, we're going to go ahead and uh, try one that is possible. I'm going to try to make my version available in the Steam Workshop if I can as well. Uh, and uh, it's going to have three timings changed because there's only the three times that score points here. One is at Larbert, which is the one highlighted at 1943. That's the original version. It's going to be 1948, for example, in my version. We're also going to have changes to timings at the Pullmont Uploop. And uh, we're also going to have a change to the Haymarket timing. Those are the point scoring timings. We're going to find out uh, what happens here. We're going to see if I can actually pull off, in some way, a perfect score here. So uh, let's get started. And let's see how well my timings work and if I can get a uh, good result on this scenario as a result of those new timings. You're working an evening shift at Grangemouth Intermodal. There are eight FEA container wagons in Grangemouth IM1, which you must couple to and bring to Edinburgh Waverley. This will involve running your engine around the wagons twice so that you can proceed with the engine at the correct end of the train. Roger. So we're gonna get ourselves started by taking the brakes off, putting the reverser in. The first run around is here at Grangemouth. Couple to your wagons, which are to your right, then head north a short distance to Grangemouth IM reception one. We're gonna put some throttle on and get ourselves moving. The train that we wanna to connect to is uh, basically that one right there. You see the train right there. That's the one we wanna to connect to. Those cars starting with the energy line car there, Those that's what we're gonna to connect to. Let's turn the wipers on. And since we can, let's turn on the uh, that one as well. Why not? Let's just do it. <laughs> so the track is set for us. I don't know if I actually checked that earlier. Uh, I didn't check that earlier on this run, but I know I checked on a previous attempt to do this, and the track is set for us. So we can proceed. We're getting ourselves into this area up here where we want to start slowing down. I'm going to put a small brake application on a little bit early. I'm going to uh, hope that I get beyond that. I might not. Oh, I might be going fast enough to do that. Let's take it off for a second just in case. All right, now we're going to put it on. So we are going to get beyond that. We are going to be fine. We're going to change that over it now. Nope, now. Thank you. So now we are going to just brake a little bit more. We're going to go get our cars. Just like that. Hello. Nice view of the highway over our heads here. That's nice to see. Motorway going over our heads. Hello, vehicles. Nice to see everybody here. 
Where's everyone going on this fine day? Ah. Hmm. I just stopped goofing around and start watching the train, shouldn't I? Here we go. <laughs> Gotta have a little fun with this, right? Now we need to start slowing down in a bloody hurry here. So we're down to six. We're going to go down further. Like now. Major break right now. A little bit of a hard hit, but we'll take it. And going forward. Into the cab again. I didn't want to put that much throttle on, but I guess with eight cars behind me, might not be a bad idea. So let's just do that. Now we're going to lower the throttle a little bit. And a little more. Working our way slowly up towards 10 where we want to be. I've had enough of giving the uh, second-hand man view. I don't think there is a second-hand man in here. So we're not going to worry about giving him or her a view anymore because he or she is not there. Simple as that. So we're going to coast for a moment here, and then I'm going to go ahead and start speeding up again as I uh, get towards the end of this 25 zone that I'm in. Or at least as I start entering that, but I'm not going to be going too much to get up to that kind of a speed because we're going to be slowing down in a moment anyway. So now that we are nearing the end of that 25 area, I'm going to put a little bit of throttle on so we have a little bit of uh, reservoir power built up. It actually might be coming a little too quickly at this point. There we go. I'll leave it here. We're going to be stopping in a second anyway. Now that we're entering the IM reception one section, there's a train going by. That is an intermodal, as you can see. I think it was 66001 or something like that, 66501. So three cars left to get in the siding. We're going to start braking now because this is a good time to do so. So we're going to have our entire train in. I'm going to put massive brake on to get our speed down as quick as I can. And there we go, that's where I want to be. So you're going to see that our stop command will be completed here in a moment. Let's go ahead and get this ready because we're going to be uncoupling uh, pretty much everything. Then we're going to have uh, our trip up to the head shunt after that. So I'm ready to uncouple on command. Done. You will be going west to Larbert before continuing to Edinburgh. You will need to uncouple. Let's take the brakes off. You will need to uncouple. Then run around your wagon so you can head in the correct direction. Roger. Notice the uh, red light at the top of the screen here, by the way, in the top uh, about three quarters of the way across the screen, that little red light. That shows that the uh, driver vigilance device is isolated. If I were to turn the DVD on, you'll see that red light go off. If I were to disable the AWS, you'll see a light go on for that. I don't know what color it is because I haven't tried that yet. But you'll see that go on as well if I were to do that. So I just want to explain that little red light you might see there. Normally in the default view, you're zoomed in something like this. So you wouldn't actually see that. So being able to zoom out and see the full view like this and get that run full view of the cab, really, really nice little thing here. Let's get rid of this uh, view here. We are getting towards the end of this siding fast. And therefore, we're going to need to start braking fast. Okay, let's start that braking now. Massive, massive brake. Yeah, 
being in the realm of acceptable stopping uh, locations here. Move to a coast for a moment because I want to make sure I was fully within the orange. I think I've succeeded in that. So we're going to bring up the F4 head. We're going to reverse this down to nothing. We're going to, uh, I'll do the reverse ring because why not? I'll keep this simple. Uh, somehow I left the light burn on the other side and it actually kept, really? Okay, wipers are going to stay on, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, we're going to put that forward. We're going to head down to the uh, IM2 at this point. We're going to be doing this cab change again later. Let's take these brakes off because before I go insane from wondering what's going on with my speed, it's not being applied. We should take the right track at this point, I believe. It's not even a case of belief, it just is. There we go. There's no belief about it, it just is. I'm trying to get ourselves as close to 25 as I can because you know Indy 500. Can I touch 25? I bet you I can. Then we can start breaking. Look at that, kids. I hit 25. There. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. We're going to start breaking as we pass the end of our train. Here it is. I'm watching the... Uh, marker for where we need to stop and I'm keeping an eye on my speed as we go through. I need a little more brake power it looks like. Need a lot more brake power it looks like. I've used it off now. In fact I'm taking it off completely for a moment. Because I put on a little too much a little too quickly. I don't think I have to be fully within the orange on this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and come to a stop, and I should be okay, I think, at this stage. Yeah, we're definitely good for backing up at this point, so we'll do that. So now we're going to be coupling up to our train back here, and then we're going to be heading to Larbert. So let's take that end view. Gonna put a level two throttle to get ourselves moving. Once we finish backing up to our train, we will be on our way. Ten is good enough, I think. Well, we're at eleven, so we're gonna have to start break. Oh, twelve. Yeah, we're going way too fast. Break, break, more break. Lots of break. All the break. Okay, this will be fine. Perfect. Couldn't do that much better, huh? Off we go. We're going to notice the train is going to start moving forward as I apply throttle. You can see that we are indeed on our way out. That means we can get back in the cab. Heard more noise. Let's let people know we're going the main track. We're going to turn the headlights on. Let's turn the taillights on because why not? That's a bad idea. Let's not do that. <laughs> Just to show what that does, if we're on the front of the train, which that's not the front, this is now the front, if we turn the taillights on, we replace our headlights. We don't want to do that. We are on our way to Larbert. Normally we're supposed to be there by 1943. As you can see, it's going to take more than five minutes for us to get to Larbert. So this is another of the premium examples in this game of timings that are not properly determined. Uh, unfortunately, in the early days of the game, there were a lot of them. Maybe it was possible back then to get the trains up to speed a lot quicker and therefore uh, and not have as, the controls being as good as they are now. 
So maybe back then it would make sense for that to happen. But nowadays, there is no way it's possible. Absolutely no way. I think I have to turn my wipers off now. There we go. The carousel's up to 40 now, so we're going to speed up a little more. Why not? We're going to have to slow down for 25 later anyway as we make our way out of Grangemouth. There's the sidings ending right up ahead there, and that is that. Those sidings, by the way, if we zoom in on where I am now, those are the, uh, yeah, leading. I am leading or loading or something like that. Loading, yeah. There are loading sidings. Doesn't matter to us. We're going too slow for this hill now, so we're going to gain a little throttle here again. Try to gain a little speed. We're, we're hanging around at 35 right now, which is not ideal. Not ideal whatsoever. We're going to have to break for this uh, 25 moment turn anyway. You're going to notice that we did not get the AWS ding that we're supposed to get. Again, there's no AWS ramp on this track. I don't know why. Remember the other snare we didn't get? An, in, even though we didn't have the alert working on that version of the train, notice that we uh, didn't get alerted for the yellow. We didn't have to push the buzzer for that one either. So we were uh, able to just keep right on going with no um, concern for our welfare in case the, if there was a train in that section. There was no concern. Okay, we have a red signal. We would be able to go past it. So that 25 coming up now means I'm going to need to uh, let the brakes or let the engine cool down. I'm on an uphill, which is actually helping nicely, but we're going to need some brake assistance anyway. So we're going to go ahead and bring the speed down just a little bit with the brake, take it back off for a moment, let the train coast its way down. I'm going to put a little more brake on just to help it out. There's our green ding. We like green dings. So I'm putting a little throttle back on at this point. Brakes are completely off. I'm just trying to maintain 25 while we're in the 25. We're going to momentarily be heading up towards 60. It looks like the uh, throttle is doing nothing right now, which is a little worrying. We were still on an uphill at that point, so it's understandable. And now we're getting way too fast. Let's not do that. All right, this is where I think the throttle wants to be right now. 12.5, level one throttle. Out of eight possible stages of throttle. Let's put those wipers back on. I can't see a thing right now. Let's hope I don't gain too much speed before I actually can pop up to 60. I think it disappears a little early here, which is going to help me a little bit. There it is. Moving up to a level 4 throttle for now so I can start getting that speed moving. And once it's on its way up, I'm going to increase a little further. We are going to have a 40 coming up at some point beyond this 50 that we're going to be entering. The 60 we're in right now is useless. We're welcome to Falkirk Gramston, ladies and gentlemen. Nice little view of the uh, station as we go through. At the back of the train, there we go. That's the, that's the ideal view right there. Hello. Beautiful. All right, we are done. Falkirk Gramston visit. Back in the front of the cab. For some reason I cut off to a level 2 throttle. I actually wanted to keep going, but we're coming up to the 40 now anyway, so it's not going to matter in a moment anyway. So we're just going to keep right on going to our 40 and we're going to hold it there for now. Okay, leaving it down to a level 1 throttle. 
If I keep gaining speed, I may have to move it to coast for a moment so we don't gain, but I think we're okay for the time being. Yeah, in fact, we are losing speed, which is what I expected at 40. So I'm gonna go to level two throttle and try to uh, not lose too much speed. Now I'm gaining a little bit, which is fine. speed is holding nicely right now we are going to lower that throttle and nudge if we need to so we don't go above the 40 mile per hour speed limit our current ETA at uh, Larbert is listed as 1945-54 which does not sound right to me but apparently it's accurate so I'm going to assume it's accurate Now we're going to take the uh, throttle down a nudge because we're at 40 and a half. We want to stay within 40 to 40 and a half at this point because we're going to be entering in a moment. We're going to go into another 40. I think we're in this area for about 12 seconds. I was going to say 14 seconds. That's more accurate. Might be 15. Nah, closer to 14. Okay, back to a level two throttle at this point there is larbert so we are going to be there in about a minute or two more likely two at this point so based on my new new timing i'm a minute early this is acceptable Switching over to the left track again as we head towards Larbert. We're going to pull into the siding and then we're going to uh, have some slow moving fun. Slow moving fun. As we get close to Larbert platform, we're going to put a large brake application, a massive brake application to bring our train down to speed. I have removed the throttle now because we should be able to coast in the rest of the way. The uh, loss should, should be negligible at this point. We're in a 70, but again, who cares? We can't go that. So um, we're not gonna get anywhere near that. Jeez, we can get to the head shot a lot quicker if we weren't going five miles per hour, that's for sure. Okay, let's start with that brake application right now. A light one for now, that's light enough. Never mind, that's not light at all. So we've only got a 400 point time in this bonus. So it looks like we're not being given the advantage of our 1000 points that I've assigned myself here, which is hilarious. I mean, the timings took effect, my point attempts didn't. My attempt to give myself more points didn't work. Turns out the game doesn't encourage you to uh, cheat to get as many points as you can as quick as you can. So I'm letting the speed coast down at this point. We are working in a five mile per hour in about nine hundredths of a mile. It may take effect early, so I do want to be down early anyway. The cars seem to be doing some things with my uh, engine here, which is interesting. I am down to the five mile per hour range, which is where I want to be, but I'm a little early on that, so Holding on a level two throttle for just a moment, we're gonna now nudge between level one and level two as we get in the siding. Let's keep it at level two for right now. Yeah, it looks like level one, level two nudging is gonna be needed. That's what we're gonna work with. All right. As before, I'm not going to try to move the train too far in the siding because if I do that, then I know what will happen. Ooh, now I need to really cut the engine off. Thank you. 
because if I do if I do get the train all the way in, then I have to back all the way up to it, and that's going to take a massive amount of time. So I'm going to try to stop the train early in the siding, uh, which should be easy enough to do. What's going to be harder is maintaining five miles per hour after that. I have to make sure the entire freight consist is in the yellow, however, because if I do not do that, then the track will not be able to change over to let me connect to the train. It will not be possible. So you have to make sure the entire train is inside of the yellow marker on the HUD. That's getting speed way too fast. I do not like it. Okay. ground has gotten flat enough that level one throttle is going to let me gain speed now. So I have to move between five and five and a half at this point. So as I get down towards five, I have to flick the throttle back on to maintain some power. And um, then as I start going up and I hit 5.3, I turn it back off just like that. I actually didn't get very far. So back on it goes. We're on a 1 in 7,247 gradient, by the way, just in case you can't read that number down there. Now at this point, I actually am going to get ready to stop. So I'm going to let the uh, train kind of slow itself down so I get the entire consist into the yellow. So I'm not going to reapply throttle at this point. In fact, I'm going to put a small brake on at this stage. Not the whole train, preferably. Not at this stage. I think we're now fully in the yellow, so let's put the uh, full brakes on. There we go. And as we check the back of the train, you can see indeed we're fully in the yellow. We're going to get ready to uh, uncouple ourselves in a moment right here at the siding, so here we are. Drop off complete over to the head shunt. Once we get to the front of the train, our regular front back configuration will be restored. Since we no longer have all that freight on our tail, it means we're going to have our speed go up and down a lot quicker than we did before. Which means I'm going to go ahead and take the throttle to a coast setting immediately at 4 miles per hour to make sure I don't go too fast. And I'm still going too fast. Turn the wipers off for a moment. Whoa, 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 don't do that. What are you doing? What are you doing, train? The good news is I have 400 points for each stop, so I can afford that. Um, with my adjusted timings, I can afford that little change, that little penalty, but that penalty should not have happened. I should not have sped up there because I don't have any throttle applied. Must be quite a bit of downhill here for that to happen. So uh, we're going to take that off for a moment. Yeah, there's a downhill here. There's the one in 100 gradient. That is a massive, massive downhill for one engine. I am beyond the point I want to be beyond, so we can stop. And the throttle will go into reverse. We're going to stop and wait here for a moment while we change cabs once again. So let's actually do that for a second. Now we're going to go ahead and change cabs once again. And forward, and I don't need wipers yet, so that's fine. Notice that this uh, signal has an arrow on it to tell you if you're going left or right. I actually like that. That's really nice. Now we have to get some gas on immediately so that we don't go towards the... Hold on, hold on. Not that way. We have to put... Oh, change cab once more so you're facing south looking towards larboard station. Roger. So we're going to go ahead and apply speed and then we'll take the brakes off. That's the ideal way to do this. This is a bit of a tricky run around here. You've got a 1 in 100 downhill there at the end of the siding. I don't know why they do that to you, but they do. Now, if you want, you could uh, use the brake to counteract against that uh, speed. So that is an option. Then you can use a level 2 throttle and just power through it. So that is an option for you if you want to drive like that. Or just take the... Uh, Breaks off completely and you know drive normally. So there are multiple ways you can do this. We made our connection where we need, or we made our 
movement point to the proper location. So now we need to get to the front of the train and couple to our uh, to the other side of it. I'm losing my words. We're on a 1 and 241 gradient right now, so it's not as bad now as it was way back at the head shunt. Which isn't really that far back, to be honest with you, but feels like it. Do not speed again, please. No more speeding. Don't like speeding. A part of it I don't like speeding, don't you understand? I dare not increase the throttle again because I will speed if I do it. <laughs> now we're not being given a destination goal for getting to in front of the train we just have to make sure we get far enough forward so that our train can um, so that the uh, people working in the yard can help us with uh, changing the track that's all we got to worry about we just gotta get far enough forward to help them so I'm gonna go ahead as I get towards the front of this I'm gonna drop a little bit of my speed actually it might do it for me <laughs> The speed might just drop off for me. I'm okay with that, if it does that. I'm actually gaining, oh, that's actually not good. Gaining speed as we leave the head shunt, not, or leave the uh, track, not a good thing. Okay, let's keep an eye on the uh, track that we are on here, because you're gonna see that track change to the other one in just a moment. Another way to do this is to look behind the train, like so. And uh, there might be a, I don't know if we're gonna see it from here, but you can definitely see it on this track, which is ideal. So as we move forward a little bit more, we're eventually going to find that the track will change over once we get far enough ahead. We're almost there. As we watch the map here, you can see it just changed. So now we want to go ahead and apply those brakes fully. We're going to get back in the cab and make sure that everything is working the way it should. And as a result of doing that, let's not go forward first, please. That's a bad idea. Reverse. Now we're going to let go. That's where I want to go. Thank you very much. Tricky little head shunts we're in. Gonna put a small amount more throttle on so we can get up to about three or four miles per hour quickly. Then we're gonna drop it. I might be able to push it up to five for a moment too. That's good enough. No, it isn't. Nope, back up, back up, not good enough. We're on a one and one hundred, not good enough. brakes on, taking them back off, connecting to the train, and that's the end of part one, ladies and gentlemen. Good work so far. You're now ready to proceed to Edinburgh Gravely, where there's a scheduled crew change. Tune in next time for part two. I'm just going to pause here so you don't have to see anything. Tune in next time for part two. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you tomorrow for the rest of this scenario. See you then. Bye-bye.